What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Geek, and today we're talking about Power Automate and Microsoft Teams, and we're going to look at the trigger, which is for a selected message. This trigger allows you to manually trigger a flow from your, from your Microsoft Teams. That means that you can select a message inside your Teams and then trigger the flow to do something based on that message. So let's take a look at it today. So I'm in Power Automate here, I can go to my Microsoft Teams connector here, and then I can go to the for a selected message trigger. Now, there's a couple of things that I need to know. Um, firstly, I'm actually doing this inside my personal productivity or my default environment. The reason for that, like every other manual trigger that we've kind of come across, this only works in your default environment. So uh, with the exception being um, CDS. So for OneDrive for Business, for Excel, for you know for this, we need to be in the default environment, otherwise it's not going to work and it's not going to appear in Microsoft Teams for us. So that's the first thing to know. Second thing to know is that we can create what's called an adaptive card. We don't have to though. So I'm going to cover adaptive cards in another video because there's quite a lot of content there and it's really cool and awesome feature that I want to dive into in depth. But I don't want to cover it in this video, I'm going to cover that separately. But this is all we kind of need. We just need to add that trigger and although we have the create adaptive card and we also have options for the dialog height and width, we don't need to specify any of these. That is the trigger that we need and that's all. From there we can add a new step and we can just throw in a compose action and we can look at some data and content and again I need to search plain text. Plain text, so there's loads of content that we can run through, um, you know there's body, application, user, team, channel, etc. Um, in fact that might be a good one. Let's throw in team as well. Um, and we can we can trigger this flow and we can get these pieces out. So let's save this. And if I try and click on test, it's trying to say, I'll on trigger action, the flow cannot be triggered here for testing. So again, manual flow can't trigger from here. We need to actually go into the application and trigger from there. I'm going to switch over to my Microsoft Teams. So this is my Microsoft Teams. I'm using the web browser here and I have a couple of messages in here. And what I will do is I will um, select one of these and we'll run the flow from it. So if we hover over it, we get the little emoji bar here. So say, yeah, that's a great message. But one of the other things we can do is we can click on the three dots, the ellipsis for more options. Um, and then we have all these options. And one of the options down here is more actions. So more, more, more. And then we have this one called, oops, we have this one called, uh, go on. We have this one called MS Teams Flow, and that's the name of my flow. So it may take a little while to update and like filter through to your Teams, but eventually it will be there as long as you do this in your default environment. So I can trigger this flow here, and then I get a little pop up, and hopefully it'll say run the flow. So yeah, run flow, match the Teams, and it says your flow runs successfully. A little tick. So it's great. Now, if I had an adaptive card, it would appear there and it would allow me to fill in some options that I could capture in a flow. Uh, but again, we'll cover that in a later video. So if we go back to our flow for a second and go back page, say OK to that, and we look at this one around 18 seconds ago, we can see for the selected message, um, we, you know, we're triggering it this way. And then we get some output here. So we get some body, some you know different notifications, link to message, uh, the idea of it, etc. It's all great. So we look at our compose. We have this is a reply to a message, and we also have the ID of the team as well. So the reply to the message is a plain text, and then this is actually the details about that team itself. So we we get in kind of a a GUID or a um, you know a, a, an array sort of form. Is that no? It's a JSON sort of form. Uh, JSON array? No, I don't know. JSON array maybe. Um, it's not an array because it's not got uh, square brackets. Um, so it's a JSON object, I guess. 
Yeah. So yeah, so we get get in that form, but we, we get that dynamic content and we can trigger something out of this. So we could do something like um, when a message is selected, we could maybe flag that up and then maybe create a task in um, our to do to do something based on that message. Um, you know, it could be something like someone's posted a really interesting article. You want to get the content on that message in the article, add it to you to do really quickly to go back and read later. So you can trigger a flow to do that. Similarly, if you need to, you know, notify someone that's maybe not in the team about something going on in the team, um, you could do that as well. Um, so loads of great options for this. Um, it's a fantastic flow. <clears throat> the only downside is you have to be in the default environment to do this, which kind of limits your options in terms of ALM. But uh, you know, hey ho. Um, but as always, I want to know what you guys use this for. So what do you use this flow for at the moment? Do you use it? Do you not use it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like and share it with your friends, that would be much appreciated. If you've not already, click that subscribe button to stay up to date with all my latest videos. And I'll see you next time.